the title of, of this um, presentation for this next half hour is the, the President Trump is taking the gloves off. And he's taking the gloves off in a number of different respects. First of all, let's turn to uh, what happened in Iraq in uh, the last couple days. I'm going to do a deep dissection on this on our subscription platform in our WTF show. Some of this I cannot go, on to, go into uh, on um, a public radio show. But on my platform website, I can. Bottom line is many people are saying, well, wait a minute, how did, how did this start? How did this escalate? Well, there was an American killed a contractor earlier in the week in December 27, 2019, by a terrorist organization that was backed by Iran. And it was at a coalition base of ours in Iraq. And then we struck some of the terror camps that were involved in that attack on the coalition base that led to the death of the American contractor, which then led to our embassy in Baghdad in Iraq being attacked. The person that was um, oversaw that operation, that... Um, was kind of the field general. Eh, not field. It was the general in the command and control. It was the Qassam Soleimani. Uh, his title, he, he wore a number of hats. His title was um, the general in charge of the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps, the Quds Force. Uh, terrorists are us is the best way to think of them. But Soleimani just didn't wear that hat of Iran. You see, what the bought-off lamestream fake media will not tell you is that Soleimani was actually the head of terrorist operations for the deep state. Yeah, for the deep state. Not just the Quds Force of Iran, this guy had tentacles all around the world. He inflicted chaos, death, and destruction, which is the business model of the deep state, for decades. I believe he first came on the scene in about 1979. For 40 years, this butcher has murdered thousands, tens of thousands, of Americans, Europeans, Middle Easterners, uh, denomination, I don't, I, probably, probably murdered more Muslims than he did Christians. This guy was truly evil. And our world is a much safer place because of President Trump taking the gloves off and taken him down. You know, a friend of mine said, uh, you want to summarize this whole thing this past week with Soleimani and Iran and Iraq and what's going on. This is the quote. Obama sent Iran, including Soleimani, by the way, he got a cut of the, you know, one and a half billion, right? Obama sent Iran, including Soleimani, cash, and Donald J. Trump then turned them into ash. It's kind of Muhammad ali -ish. Muhammad Ali. It kind of has that ring to it. But in fact, that is the case. And <clears throat> we've talked about Soleimani on our website and our subscription platform quite a, quite a bit over, over a period of time. And I believe taking him down, at least in my lifetime, was the single largest takedown of a terrorist that I'm aware of. When I had a number of guests on about Benghazi, 
Suleimani and the Quds Force involvement came up. Bought off lamestream fake media will not touch this. We'll, we'll go nowhere near this. But we did. I had Charles Woods on, the father of Ty Woods, one of the four Americans who was murdered in Benghazi. And we talked about what happened to his son and to the other three Americans who died in Benghazi. And, by the way, the many dozens that were put in harm's way, that if it were not for Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty and a number of other folks that fought the terrorists, would be dead today as well. We talked about what Benghazi was all about. And, and let me distill it down for you. That, again, the, the deep state-owned fake media will never touch. Benghazi was a weapons-running operation overseen by Barack Obama and his Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. The person on the ground running the operation was the ambassador, Christopher Stevens. And his role was to funnel arms and weapons into the deep state's terrorist arm called Al-Qaeda, which, by the way, was also supported by our own, yeah, that's right, CIA. They wanted to loot Libya. It's resources, it's gold, it's silver, it's oil. And the only way to do that was to kill Gaddafi. So that's what they did. And then Stevens was in charge after that operation was a, quote, success, end quote, for the deep state, overseen by their puppets Obama and Clinton and Brennan, the director of the CIA. Then what they did is they reversed those flow of weapons. And that's what Stevens was doing. But then Stevens got cold feet. Because he realized as he reversed these flow of weapons, they were being funneled into Turkey. Remember, the last person he met with was a, was a representative of Turkey. Were funneled into Turkey and then into Syria to an organization which was known as ISIS. That's right. The Obama administration, along with Hillary Clinton, weaponized, funded, helped train ISIS. At the time, the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency was General Michael Flynn. He put his hand up and said, this is wrong. This is really bad. And he went in front of Congress behind closed doors under oath and told them what was going on. Folks, that was one of the reasons why General Flynn was targeted four days after Donald Trump became president. They could not have him in a position of power such as National Security Advisor with what he had brought forward before. He knew where all the bodies were buried. He knew who was involved. They could not let him stand. One of the issues that we spoke about with Charles Woods and two whistleblowers who were involved in the field of operations that night when Benghazi went down September 11th, 2012, and September 12th, 2012. What the whistleblowers brought forward and the evidence that Charles Woods brought forward in that interview was that a number of folks realized that, the, that there was an imminent attack, tried to present that information to their superiors, and were blocked. And then once the attack occurred... What they did is they stepped up and they demanded help and to get people on the ground, at least in the air, at least drones in the air, to fight the terrorists. Notice what happened, what occurred this week at the Baghdad, our, our embassy in Baghdad, that when there was attack of the terrorists, which was planned by Soleimani on our embassy, Notice what happened. Within an hour, Donald Trump had Apaches in the air firing flares, and he had 100 Marines moving in 
to the embassy to secure it. Contrast that to what the whistleblower said in our interview occurred in Benghazi. For hours they were calling for help. And for hours the whistleblowers relate the story that they were being told repetitively to stand down, that no help would be sent. Why? Because le political, I can't use, le use leaders, use the word leaders, political operatives in our country wanted to tie up loose ends in Benghazi. Stevens was talking. He was talking to people about he couldn't be involved in this weapons running operation anymore. And he started to speak outside of the Obama-Clinton orbit, and they couldn't let that happen. And they had to tie up loose ends. The terrorist that led the attack on Benghazi, as I understand it, were the Iranian Quds forces. And the person overseeing that operation was Soleimani. A couple of very brave investigative journalists have written about this. Now, Mary Fanning and Alan Jones wrote about it. If you go to their website, the AmericanReport.org, and just on the slider as it goes by, you'll see the story, that the article that they wrote documented. I encourage you to, um, to go to that article and to read what your government did and what your government did not do when it came to Benghazi. The night that uh, Suleimani was uh, annihilated on um, January 2nd, 2020, by President Trump and the United States military. It's my understanding an Apache helicopter was involved in two drones. I sent the following note to uh, Charles Woods, whose son Ty Woods died in uh, Benghazi, and Charles is a friend of mine, and two of the whistleblowers who were part of that interview I did. Now, by the way, we did that interview on our subscription service, and the subscriber said, look, this is so important. The ramifications of this interview are so enormous. You need to release it to the public. Now, prior to that, I had released it to people within the Trump administration. At the same time, it was released to our subscribers. But I took the advice of our subscribers, and I put it up on YouTube. And it lasted for a period of time, and then was taken down. Well, it was taken down, the reason we were given was because we mentioned the movie 13 Hours. I stated this earlier in the show. We mentioned the movie 13 Hours. We did not say it was good or bad. We didn't give a critique of it. We just mentioned that a movie had been made about Benghazi. We did not show any video clips or we did not show any pictures from the movie. Yet, that interview was taken down because according to YouTube, they had received a complaint from Warner that was involved in making the movie that we mentioned the movie. I kid you not. But this is the note I sent to Charles Woods and the two whistleblowers that were in that interview. That, and by the way, is still available on the website, DaveJanda.com. Charles and to the whistleblowers, I believe what happened tonight in Iraq was a direct result of your efforts in bringing the truth forward on Benghazi. Suleimani is dead tonight because of your courage. Ty and Glenn, that's Ty Woods and Glenn Doherty, two of the last folks that died in Benghazi who were fighting the terrorists, the Quds forces, Suleimani at the time. Ty and Glenn just sent their message to the world and our world is much safer tonight and it is a safer happier new year already 
Very soon after that, I received a, a note back from, from Charles Woods. And here's what he said. Dear Dave, you are absolutely right. Because of your interview, the two whistleblowers that you named them, but I will not name them on air, the two whistleblowers and the other whistleblowers were able to come together because of your interview. If you would like, you can share the rest of this text. And here's what Charles said. As the father of Navy SEAL Ty Woods, who was killed in Benghazi, Libya, I would like to personally thank President Trump for his clear and decisive action to rescue the Americans under attack at our U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. If Donald Trump had been president on September 11, 2012, instead of Obama or Mrs. Clinton, my son Ty would be alive today. Respectfully, Charles Woods, father of Navy SEAL Ty Woods. What uh, kind of reaction is, did President Trump get? <laughs> well, there are people that said, you know, if Donald Trump cured cancer, they would be finding problems with the fact that he cured cancer. Donald Trump made the decision to take down the single most brutal terrorist in my lifetime. Pelosi, Schumer, Adam Schiff came out and said, um, we should have been informed prior to the action of taking Soleimani out. This assassination will lead to World War III. <laughs> really? That they should have been informed? Three of the biggest leakers in Washington, D.C. should have been informed ahead of time? What are the odds that Soleimani would have been taken out if those three had been put in the loop? My answer is he'd, st he'll st he'd still be walking around today killing people. It's also my understanding from the folks that I've gotten to know over the past 30 years that are fighting for freedom behind the curtain. As far as World War III is concerned, that what Soleimani was in the process of implementing was a multi-stage terrorist attack, not just in Iraq, not just in the Middle East, but around the world. And I have been told that it was because he was taken out that World War III could well have been prevented. Because if his attacks were allowed to occur, the devastation would have been so large across so many different areas that it was a, a deep state fantasy that President Trump would have been pushed into a huge escalation, military escalation, to the point where World War III would have been, would have been inevitable. So when folks are out there saying that President Trump initiated the beginning of World War III with the takeout of Soleimani. I categorize those people as being puppets of the deep state. I believe, based on the information that I have, that if President Trump had not taken out Soleimani, the death, destruction, and chaos that would have been inflicted by him, yet again, but only on a larger scale, would have led to World War III. Susan Rice, former National Security Advisor to Barack Obama, said that, well, we never really 
had an opportunity to take Soleimani out, which is why President Obama never did so. I'm not going to mention names, but I will tell you somebody very high up in military intelligence, who's a friend of mine, told me that on repetitive occasions over eight years, they had Soleimani lined up. And Obama punted. That's the, that's the watered-down version of what I was told. Obama let him go. And in the process, look what happened. 